Hi everyone, it's Roger and James here from the What's on Disney Plus podcast. In this week's episode, we're going to be talking all about the D23 Expo. We're going to be talking about um, basically our predictions and also what's going to be coming on. So before we do any of that, make sure you do hit that subscribe button to keep up with the latest Disney Plus news. You can also go find us over at whatsondisneyplus.com. And as per usual, you can subscribe on audio platforms and you can find us on Facebook and Twitter. So in this week's episode, um, as I said, we're going to be doing the D23 Expo, but a quick bit of housekeeping. We are using some different software this week. Unfortunately, the software we've been using for a number of years has been turned off by Google, and we've had to be doing a bit of pieces. We've actually been messing about for well over an hour trying to sort it out. So we're going to try and keep this one short, because basically we've already said it three times. So, uh, James, quickly, just before we go any further, what have you been watching this past week? Uh, this past week, I watched The Lion King. Mm-hmm. Um, but the animated one or the, yeah. the hand drawn traditional animated one, I wanted to see if it, how it compared to the, uh, to the new one, which I saw last week and we talked about last week. And, uh, yeah, I, I felt that even if you account for, you know, having seen it for the past 30 years, 20 years, however many years it's been, uh, I think, I still think it's better. I, I, it flowed better. The animation was better. The, the, lip syncing or whatever you want to think of it for this movie was just better so which isn't to say that the live action one was bad as we talked about it just it just doesn't measure up but in addition to that i also watched the last two episodes of agents of shield uh season six there is uh season seven uh which will be the last one apparently um, I think I saw in Diz Kingdom that it finished wrapping yeah. uh, the final episode, which just means they finished filming. They still have to go back and do all the special effects and editing and add in music and all that stuff. But yeah, uh, I've, I've enjoyed the ride. Season six um, started off a bit slow for me, but by the end I was, I was digging it. So I won't say any more because it did just come out and I suspect that uh, a lot of people won't have a have had a chance to watch it, especially if they're waiting for it to show up on Netflix or eventually someday uh, Disney plus, although we we're pretty sure it's not a launch uh, lineup item. Yeah. I mean, for me, um, one of the things I've been watching as I finished off star Wars um, season six of the clone wars, I finished off the, um, the animated version of that. So that was really fun. Really enjoyed it, especially the last few episodes with Yoda and kind of going, I'm a bit late, but now I have managed to, plow through all of the six episodes of uh the clone wars also ran through the um all four seasons of rebels so i'm fully caught up fully grasping all of it um not good timing for me because fantasy flight games keep releasing new and um, clone wars based um collectibles which is now now i know who the characters are and all the ships and stuff it's become a little bit easier for me to do. Um, also, this past week, with that one finished, look, started looking on Disney Life for something new. Couldn't quite decide between what to go for. So started season one of DuckTales, the new version that came out um, about a year ago. Unfortunately, Disney Life is always about a year to 18 months late. So while everybody else is on season two, I've just started season one. Loving it. Really enjoying it. Really loving the fact that David Tennant as Scrooge McDuck. I think that's working very well. And yeah, really enjoying the series. It's kind of, yeah, I've... I've been pleasantly surprised i think that's it i think because of trying to get through nearly 10 seasons of star wars anime i did take that's a big time sink when you think of it as in terms of 10 seasons of star wars shows although uh fortunately they're 22 minute episodes and not you know uh the 42 44 minute ones that we kind of gotten used to with other shows such as agents of shield or or even longer with uh hbo shows like chernobyl and game of thrones and stuff like that so it is kind of nice every once in a while yeah sure it's what 22 episodes a season not counting season six uh and then rebels was about the same but it's really half that because of the length which is still as you said a big time investment but not as painful as it could be no, um, so before we go any, so let's pretty much now move into some of the news. So I'm going to do this um, kind of like a rapid fire because there's just a few little things that they've kind of announced. So first off, um, according to a Reddit user on the Disney Plus Reddit, they discovered that there was a uh, Disney Plus beta or beta, depending on how you want to pronounce it, um, running on the PlayStation 4 in both North America and also the 
by European stores. Um, with that, there was a number of little details, and then there was an uh, icon which just had a big beta um, in red, red like stripe across the top. Now, it's definitely worth pointing out that this beta or beta is not open. It's not. A, it might not be open to the public. It might never be open to the public. This is just test testing inside for them to make sure everything's working before the launch perfectly normal this will be happening on all of the different devices so just because here in playstation doesn't necessarily mean it's not on xbox switch and apple and all the rest of it it's just on this one i say that because the the facebook group and comments and stuff of just people being like i want in i want in I, it's like no i'm trying it's like read it it's they don't they it's not an open beta and you can sign up we don't know that yet they might do that i doubt they will but it normally just means that they're testing and things are happening on the fact that the, the I mean, even when I checked on it and looked at the actual icon itself, it was located on the PlayStation server. It's not a huge surprise because you know they're going to be doing this, but it's, we are getting close. As of the time of recording, we're 101 days away from Disney Plus launching. So it's getting close. It's coming soon. Um, but it's nice to see that it's, I think we're starting to see some of those little bits and pieces coming in place for um, Disney Plus. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I agree. Uh, the beta is almost certainly going to be strictly internal with multiple layers of uh, non-disclosure agreements. The, the chances of this being open are almost nil. Yeah. I think the closest we're going to get to a beta are the people who are going to get a, a little bit of a hands-on at D23. And then maybe like they might do demos at like Disney stores, yeah. but that's about like the full extent of it. Um, yeah. And so we, none of us, uh, you and me included, uh, should expect to have any early access to this. Yeah. We, we will, we will be watching Mandalorian and lady and the tramp day one, just with, just like everybody else. Yeah. Um, a couple of other bits and pieces. This is just, um, so first off from the Hulu side, they've confirmed that there's an episode with the runaways and cloak and dagger. There's a crossover episode that has been confirmed. They're going to be merging together for an episode in season three of the runaways, which is coming to Hulu in December. Don't know too much more about this. Kind of nice to see them doing this. I'm wondering, this is a way of kind of doing cloak and not doing cloak and dagger season three just yet. Yeah. Um, Obviously, they, I don't think they've announced a Cloak and Dagger yeah. Season 3, but this is a good way of kind of keeping the universe uh, integrated without going all in. Mm -hmm. And there's, you know, plenty of thematic uh, crossover between the two. So it makes sense. It's not like they're just randomly mm -hmm. throwing their two shows together. There's actually, yeah. you know, a connection. They, they both, you know, they're tackling it from completely different directions, but they're about kids either mm -hmm. with broken families or you know estranged from their families or whatever just completely different circumstances for the why the runaways and why cloak and dagger are in that situation yeah and also with um with hulu as well they've moved their scripted um drama all of that is now being moved under the disney television group alongside disney i think basically like disney plus fox fx sorry fx national Geo, basically all the television stuff is now all being pushed under one banner because the direct to consumer are then going to be selling it on. Um, it seems like there's been a lot of reshuffling around. I know there's been a lot of, um, there's been reports of firings and stuff that came through just before I went to bed last night as well in different areas, but it looks like Disney are shuffling around everything and it makes sense to treat Hulu the same way they do other things because it's more about, I think their key thing going forward is more about having TV shows, and then if it flips or it changes, they can put it on different networks. They can put it on whichever streaming service they like. They, it's then no longer down to the television department to essentially sell it. They can now just kind of go, no, no, it's yours. You know, it's there's a lot less arguing there. I think between the networks and stuff because they're all uh, all run by the same division, and then Disney Plus and Hulu are then two separate things, which. And also share in stuff as well. So and all the advertising is all being done by one thing for all the channels. So I think it just gets rid of that whole arguments between the divisions of who's running what. So it runs a bit smoother. But I think we're yeah. gonna be seeing a lot more of this. Yeah, internally it's all the same. The mm -hmm. only point it becomes different is when they choose which platform to distribute mm -hmm. on, which yeah. is great. Um also this past week, um 
yeah, it's, <laughs> it was this was a bit of an odd one. Was um, Michael Eisner came basically came out and was like saying because he was doing an interview and he's like things like Disney Plus can beat Netflix and all the rest of it. And this just this keeps coming up and there's been loads of different articles about you know Netflix. I think there's that kind of the story being told about the idea that Netflix is you know about to get hit with multiple versions. We know about HBO Max and we've got the, the Comcast version, all these different ones coming in, and even. I think Showtime is having a little bit of a dig as well. Everyone's just like, they know there's a lot of blood and water and some of the companies are going, well, no, we're going to wait because obviously the CBS merger, that's, that's, and Viacom, that's now being, going ahead. There's a lot of blood in the water and there's a lot of stories about the fact of basically Netflix versus everybody else. Yeah, I mean, but it, it's to be expected because Netflix has been the big dog mm -hmm. uh, in the field for years now so it's of course they're the ones you go netflix versus and you don't see as much disney plus versus versus hbo max versus uh, cbs all access and stuff like that but we will i think you know the field is going to even a lot netflix isn't going to go away uh they even when you take away all of everyone else's content netflix still has a strong lineup of their own shows but yeah they're not going to be on on top anymore now who is on top Obviously, we we have a bias on who we think will be on top, but honestly, the the real answer will come a couple of years down the road from yeah, now. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take a few years. I I think HBO Max is going to be um a, a good one to beat because I think that's really going to be have a lot of different content. I think Disney Plus. I think Disney's strategy of multiple platforms cheap could be it could work out best if those people are looking at different options and going, well, I'll have that 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 and that, and I've got five different things for seven eight quid each rather than the one hbo max for twenty dollars or something like that it's we're going to see where the market goes disney might make some shifts and um changes around that's why i'm kind of viewing hulu you know as that kind of connection of at some point they could interconnect and obviously there's that kind of weird thing going on with the add-ons and other stuff so we're going to see what happens but disney plus they are planning for at least five years and i think they internally prefer the the name disney plus to hulu just being you've got to imagine hulu was not their creation you know they brought it they didn't come up with a name or anything like that so therefore you know disney plus is their own little creation and we know a lot what's going on there so let's move into the big kind of story of the week really was that disney confirmed all the details for the d for d23 expo which is taking place in california uh, was it 23rd 24th of of august so i'm just going to run through the details so first off there is going to be the disney plus pavilion which is found on the expo sh um, show's floor they're going to be having guests being able to demo a live disney plus app experiences across mod across mobile and connected tvs showing the access to disney pixar marvel star wars national geographic and more I like the fact that it says and more so that's definitely there's going to be some bit of other brand in there as well yes we'll be able to see costumes and props from the disney plus originals and have the opportunity to subscribe to the um service with a special offer exclusive to expo attendees and d23 members so that's definitely a thing about they they're going after subscribers the fact that this is d23 members as well means it's going to be going outside of the d23 expo and I'm also interested to see the fact that it says D23 members, not necessarily just D23 mem Go members. Because D23 members, that's quite a large, because there is a free version of that as well. Right. Although it does, you, you do have to be a pretty hardcore fan to go on D23. I don't think most people know yeah. what D23 is, including just going into the parks. Most of the people there don't know what D23 is. And to be honest, they don't really advertise it. No. Um, other than the expo, which carries the same name. Yeah. Um, actually, the expo, I think, is how I found out about D23 in the first place back in, like, 2015. Yeah. I mean, it's $99 a, a year if you want the gold version. For me, in the, U in the UK, it doesn't work because the magazine is only for US subscribers, and all the events all take place in America. So there's actually zero benefit for me to be a gold member at all. They, they used to be used to get all the free gifts and stuff, but they've stopped all that internationally. And I, I was a uh, gold member in 2017 with the last D23, the expo. And uh, I, I got it almost specifically for that because, you know, there the are certain um, panels or whatnot. If you were a gold member, uh, you might be able to get into a special section. 
but the management at D23 was so poor that any value from the membership, the gold membership just went out the door completely. And then I found it wasn't worth it. Yeah. It's, 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 it's unfortunately for me, D23 is at the completely wrong time of the year. Um, because it being August trying to get away then is just, it's a bit tricky um, right in the middle of the kids holidays for us. So it's, I'm hoping one day, maybe in two years time, maybe I, I would like them if they could move it. I would love it as well if they shifted it between Orlando and Florida, like alternate years or something like that. It would be a bit cool, but they seem to like the LA one because they can get all the stars in. But nevertheless, let's hear a look. They've also got um, the D23 um, Disney Plus First Look Showcase, which is taking place in Hall D23, um, which is a 6,800-seat um, venue, and they're going to be showing off um, Lady in the Tramp, Mandalorian, High School Musical, the series, and much more. They're going to have um, Yvette Nicole Brown, who stars in Lady in the Tramp. She's going to be hosting the event. There's going to be never-before-seen surprise guests, performances, and reveals. Uh, this one is taking place at 3.30 p.m. So for me, it's about 11 o'clock or so at night. So it finishes, and it's about an hour and a half long. No word yet if it's going to be live-streamed. They have live-streamed events in the past, but they also haven't as well. Sometimes, um, but they will usually are sending out PR releases and people are live streaming it and tweeting for me. It depends if they lock it down or if they don't. I know it's going to be a late night for me that night. Uh, because of that, just as a heads up, we are going to record the podcast a day later because of all of this news coming through. Um, otherwise, I get no sleep because by the time if I go to bed at like two o'clock in the morning and then have to get up, because what you guys don't realize. Um, we record this about half six in the morning, my time. So it's, it's I, I, don't like to hear it. yeah. I don't like to hear it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's midnight. Yeah. It's midnight. Yeah. So it's that kind of thing. It was late for us. So the idea of doing, of, a, of then doing a full day's work and trying to do all this on a two hour sleep is not going to happen. So we're going to push yeah. it back, give us time. Um, there's also going to be a high school musical sneak peek screening and panel at 5.30 on the same day and the D23 arena. So you're going to literally have to get, if you are at the event, you're going to have to run across because you've got half an hour from the, the last one ends. No. Go first don't, don't, don't even try. Uh, based on past experience at D23, both 15 and 17, major panels, you have to be there several hours in yeah. advance to get in. So if you're going from one that ends at two and the next one starts at 2.30 or three, it's yeah. not going to happen. Yeah. It's a bit, yeah, it's a shame they've got it so close. Um, there's also some ESPN stuff, and there's a Hulu pavilion and an ESPN pavilion. The, um, there's also um, Disney Plus pavilion stage. They've got three days full of panels, highlights of the services, originals, and collections. So just this is on the on the tentative schedule for this. So 12 o'clock, they've got the Walt Disney Animation Studios panel with Eric Goldberg and Mark Hain, followed by half an hour later, they've got half 12, the world according to Jeff Goblin Q and A with Jeff Goblin, and they got Phileas and Ferb com conversation with Swampy and Dan. And then on the Saturday, some more ESPN stuff. Twelve o'clock, Star Girl performance and panel. One o'clock, The Simpsons trivia. One fifteen, um, Marvel's Hero Project panel. Um, Two thirty, Forky asks a question and lamp life creative panel. And then at three o'clock, you've got the Secret Society of Second Born Royals Q and A with um, Peyton Elizabeth Lee. Then on the Sunday, you've got Prop Culture Movie Prop Showcase and Q&A um, with the guys from that show, which is coming to Disney Plus. Um, 11.15 um, a.m. be our Chef Games. That's going to be taking place. 12 o'clock, Monsters at Work Behind the Scenes presentation. 12.45 p.m., The Imagination Story Conservation with um, Leslie um, Twerks and oh, Iworks, Iworks, I think, and Bob West. Let, uh, 115 short circuit creative panel 3 30 p.m um pixar spark shorts screening they are going all in aren't they there is no doubt about the previews on that no and obviously this is the event that they want to go all in on because these are the people who are most likely to spend money right up front uh yeah, yeah. you know this is the hardcore of the hardcore so. Yeah, I mean, I'm really glad that they kind of come out like a few weeks before and they're kind of laying out the groundwork. Um, so, like, for me, I'm looking at this news going, this is great. I'm hoping that we're going to start seeing some trailers. They're probably going to start putting out, there'll be sneak cli um, clips. We're going to find out a lot. And they are really pushing the originals. 
Uh, it seems like they're pushing more of the, what I would call the, maybe the stuff that's in the first wave on day one and a few things coming a little bit late. I, I'm not, you know, don't expect any Marvel stuff because they wouldn't have even start filming yet. I think the Star Wars, it'll be Mandalorian because the, the Diego Luna show hasn't started filming yet. They are going all in, get the diehard collect um, these, you know, because if they can get D23 members in, then, then they spread the word out. And that's the key thing, really. This is all about getting the word out about Disney+. Plus. The fact you can subscribe at the event, that's a good thing to kind of get numbers going. Um, I'm fully expecting pre-orders to start that weekend as well. I think just in general. And they'll do the D23 members first, and then that'll probably lead into September, October, letting everybody else go in. But the D23 in some ways is the, the, the early birds getting people in. They, as far as a discount, I'm thinking maybe a 10, 15% or a few months free. I'm not expecting too much. No, it, it's not going to be too much. It, it will be something that will entice D23 goers to get it and it'll make them feel like they, they got a benefit for actually being at D23. Um, but people at home, which will be the majority of us, uh, just keep in mind how much people are spending to be at D23 in the first place. Uh, so, yeah, they'll have the advantage in that regard. But at the same time, yeah, it's an expensive yeah. trip. Let's just say that. Yeah. Um, I'm fully expecting to see trailers drop that weekend for everybody. Oh, I'm yes. thinking this is going to be, they are going to go in the heart. This is why they got all the Marvel stuff out of the way. This is my, my main reason why I think they did all that Marvel announcements to get this in. They are going to, well, this is my opinion. They are going to do a lot of trailers. Um wide release on youtube yeah. or, or what yeah. have you they are going to hold a couple for yeah. uh d23 only you yeah. know um if you went in 2015 you got to see a preview of Endgame, which yeah. uh you know no one else saw i think they saw a clip of thor meeting up with guardians of the galaxy something like that um because again they do want people who go to d23 to feel like they are getting something special at d23 yeah. so We'll get stuff. We'll get the Mandalorian, I bet, because that's going to be like, they want everyone to hype up the Mandalorian uh, trailer, that is. But there will be things at D23 that we at home will not see unless someone smuggles in a phone and we get some really grainy, awful screen capture, which honestly, I don't think I'd even watch anyway. I'd rather yeah. rather wait for it to, to properly come out. But there's stuff, uh, there was stuff shown at D23 2017 <laughs> that still hasn't made it out into the public some of it won't uh they previewed like the planes movie yeah. not the the fire and rescue plane oh, the, spa oh, the space the, one. the space one which looked amazing and unfortunately it, it looks like that project will never come to fruition but the stuff like that was shown and uh never came out so yeah. there is going to be a special there's a special presentation taking place during the D23 for a secret announcement. No one knows what it is. Um, it's going to be a lots of news because we're going to have lots of theme park news, um, lots of TV shows. But I think the movie side of things, you're going to see trailers and stuff. But I'm not expecting a lot of the movie. I'm not expecting too many surprises in that presentation. They've already announced the slate. You might get a trailer or two, but I think it does, does feel like they're lining up for the Disney Plus to be the main push for that weekend to get it out there. That's why they dumped all that Marvel stuff back at the San Diego Comic-Con. Get it all out the way, get all the news beat. And yeah, it just looked... I'm really impressed with the lineup. Um, there's a, something there that's very important, I think, for us as well is, and this is the thing that we should get everyone, that demonstration of letting people try it out. Now, for sure, we're going to see lots of people sharing images and video of the screens and all the rest of it. We're going to have to be eagle-eyed because this is going to be our way of seeing what's legacy. This is going to be the legacy content that this app is going to show us what's, what movies are on there. I think the Fox stuff, what TV shows, all the Disney Channel stuff. This is where we're going to see what's coming in and what's coming out, etc. And that... You, we're going to start hearing like some random movie that we never heard of. That's where we're going to see it is on that little app that someone sees it. And I can't really push that enough. I don't think they're going to be, they're not talking about legacy stuff. They might give out a few things, but they've got an hour and a half presentation. They're focused on originals, not on operation Dumbled drop. If that's coming to it or not, they, they need to, they need to push the originals and they'll just let those little app videos kind of do the work for them. 
Yeah. I mean, the, the few things that we won't see um, in addition to like the obscure titles will be the big titles. They're not going to have um, anything from the Mandalorian leak. They're not going to have anything yeah. from, you know, high school musical, except what they allow from the, the actual panel that's dedicated to that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you know, it, honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if the demo units were almost exclusively um, back catalog titles. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think we're going to see a lot of bits and pieces. So this is again, and like predictions, you know, this is where we're all kind of coming in. I think there will be a few surprises. I think there might be the odd. The trouble is, it's like, like with the like the tri- teaser trailers and things like this. I think it's very tricky because they've announced so much, but they've shown so little. Because you've got to look at it that essentially there's not really one Disney Plus original we've actually seen a single bit of footage for. So while I'd love them to be giving us a preview and announce, you know, they're probably going to announce one or two things that we've never heard of. They've still got to get those initial, like, high school musical, you know, The Lady in the Tramp and The Mandalorian. They still have got to show monsters at work, etc. They still got to show us that first. And that seems to be this, the way that the lineup is, is all about getting clips out of these new shows. And now I think from the D23 to launch, we're just going to see... They might even stretch them out a little bit. They might not give them all out over that weekend to try and do it. But I wouldn't be at all surprised if the like the, the main ones that they're talking here, we're going to see at least Mandalorian, High School Musical, and Lady in the Tramp. I think those three. If I don't see the the full trailers online, I think I would be disappointed. Things like maybe Jeff Goldblum could be. I don't know. We might see that a little bit later on, but that's my prediction. I'm not. I'm expecting lots, but I'm also not expecting anything to to blow me away because it's they got to get that the original stuff out first right and they also don't want the smaller stuff let's say that jeff goldblum was a, a smaller one um they don't want that getting lost because they know you know the mandalorian trailer is going to be huge high school musical trailer is going to be huge lady and the tramp might even be uh a pretty decent sized like audience of people checking it out but stuff like the right stuff Jeff Goldblum, um, you know, random Mickey cartoon number 30, they're, not, they're just going to get yeah. lost in the shuffle. And it would make a lot more sense for them to be uh, doled out in little bits and pieces from between D23 and launch date because, yeah, people are going to know about the, the Mandalorian and they're going to want to eat up as much Mandalorian content. But if you've got that little, that little drought of information – that's a good time to stick in. Hey, we've got this thing with Jeff Goldblum and you know, he's been absolutely crazy the last couple of years doing stuff like guardians of the galaxy and, and hotel Artemis and stuff. And it's like, all right, let's see what this is about. I also think as well with they, they're primarily going to be focused on whatever's going to be launching on November the 12th. That is going to be their previews. Right. That's, that's going to be the thing. They're not, there might be a few sneak peeks of some new shows and some new announcements and be like, Oh, we've got this new Marvel. Yeah. I'm not expecting anything Marvel. I'm not expecting anything Star Wars. They might even give the name of the new star, that second Marvel Star Wars. It's like even the third Star Wars series. I wouldn't, I think they're going to hold on till next up until celebration because I, they've got too much. They've got rise of the Skywalker and the Mandalorian. And yeah, they've got too much just in general, not just Star Wars titles. But at this point, Mandalorian is the big item yeah. uh, for Disney+. Plus. Obviously, Rise of the Skywalker uh, is a different situation. But even just announcing the second series would take away that little slice of hype for the Mandalorian. Say it's uh, hypothetically, it's an Obi-Wan series or, or a, um, a Yoda series. You know, one of the things that have been rumored for a very long time just announcing Obi-Wan, even if you don't say Ian McGregor's attached to it, just an Obi-Wan series, it would take people's attention away from the Mandalorian. And the Mandalorian is what is going to sell D20, all right, sorry, uh, Disney plus on launch day or one of the major titles. And they, yeah, if even one person is doing kind of what, what's happening to Star Trek right now, where yeah. they're kind of going, yeah, I could go for CBS all access right now but I'm just going to wait for Picard to come out and, and then what, sorry, watch all the Star Trek shows that, that are on CBS in like a month and a half. No, they want you to go, no, no, no. You want Disney plus right now. I'm also expecting like a, like a big sizzle reel, like a trailer just to be like Disney plus kind of with maybe like 
fraction of a second of all the all the original stuff and you know and the legacy stuff and the old stuff just to kind of do like a proper blast i am really hoping and now this is my little thing and now it might not be the right time for them to do it get out some international news get out just say it's coming to canada in december it's coming to europe in december or something something slightly vague mean even a date because there's a lot of hunger outside of the US for this and them just being like, oh, it's coming to America November the 12th. There's a lot of people outside that want it and the fact that there's all this like news coming out. I know they want to focus on that November the 12th. They don't want too many dates out there unless they just turn around and go, oh, it's coming to Europe the same day, but I can't see them doing that. Um, I they think would have said so already. I think it's going to be end of November, beginning of December for um, maybe Canada and Europe. I think it's going to be very close because they are very much aware that if they leave it too long, they're just going to open everybody up for pirating and they're just le leaving money on the table because people will want to see that Mandalorian as quickly as possible. A week or two, they can kind of hold off, but I would not be at all surprised if they do a little, I know they, it's in America, it's an event in America, it's for Americans, but, it's, but they need to get that word out at some point to just not have forgotten the rest of the world because that's you know they need disney plus everywhere they're talking to everyone i a little snippet we have got a uh, event coming up this next week there's a uh, quarterly results on tuesday from disney they could even sneak out there there might even be a little bit they might get that information out before then i think we might find out some technical details or some something along those lines at this event because i think the investors are very much interested in disney plus and also they're very much aware that disney plus is very much implement hitting the stock at the minute because there's a lot of expectation of what they're going to do so i think we might get a little chunk of news this next week but then the next investors day is literally like a couple of days before disney plus launches so you know it's just one of those situations but a little bit of international news would be very very welcome at some point just to kind of you know, if even if they said it's coming first of December, I know they don't want to. They don't want to mix up too much with with people getting confused of different dates. But just ignoring it is not really going to help. As Disney Plus, once they start putting out all these trailers, then it's going to become even harder for the for international people to be going. Well, when are we getting it? It's like, oh, is it going to be on this or is it? You know, it's like you can't do that. I know they are planning a global launch, but they need to. I think a little bit more now once they start putting out trailers and footage they need to up their game I think a little bit on the international side absolutely uh, it's very easy for us in the states to be very American centric and oh yeah Canada even Canada it's like well oh yeah that yeah Canada what it, but uh but yeah it is extremely important because you're cutting out an entire well in, in your case you're cutting out basically an entire continent's worth of people uh who want to pay for this the the product and they don't know and you know this is this is why netflix was successful in the first place was uh they made it easier to watch movies just by paying a monthly fee than uh finding it on pirate and taking the risk of uh of viruses and having your information stolen and all that and if we can go to europe or if disney can go to europe and canada and mexico and all these places and go it's not a it's not at launch day but it's on this day yeah like you said that would make a big difference because people oh well okay yeah we can wait a week we can wait two weeks but if we get all the way up to launch and they're still like no no we don't want to confuse people we'll give you the launch day after the american launch day yeah. i you know the the pirating is just going to go through the yeah. roof the, uh, yeah one, one last thought on that uh one of the things that they are definitely keeping in mind, though, is that they, the American launch is actually kind of like a beta test for uh, Europe for and Canada. Real, for the real customers. <laughs> well, kind of. Because, you know, all the launch problems, and there will be launch problems on launch day, uh, will be tested by Americans we, yeah. you know, and Europeans with VPNs, but that's a different matter. Um, but, <laughs> I'm not saying something that people don't know. Um, <laughs> and it's not piracy. They still have to pay for it. Yeah. Um, but people uh, testing it on launch day, they will experience all the crashes, the, the disconnects, the you know buffering, all that fun stuff. 
and Disney will get the metrics they need. Hopefully they will use those metrics properly. So when they get to Canada, they get to Europe, Western Europe, Eastern Europe, whatever, they will have those ironed out and you guys will have a much smoother launch. Yeah. Now we just need to know, will that be a week later, a month later, 2020? They've said it's not 2020, but until they give a date, it could be. I think like, for example, like for me in the UK, it's a little bit different because we've got the Disney Life app already. So therefore they've already got a system in place. Um, the problem is in Europe, we've got like different, different countries have got different aspects of different licensing, like Netflix, Sky, etc. So there are going to be problems of we are not going to get the same content as America in terms of the legacy stuff. But if they can get Disney Plus out there with as much legacy content as they possibly can. I mean, it's like now, if you can take Disney Life and just pop in, change, rebrand it, relogo it, put the Mandalorian and all the Disney Plus stuff in there that's original, I think that will actually be enough just to keep people tied over. Be like, you know, they can add, you know, it's like, oh, there's no Star Wars. They can put in there, this will be coming at a later date. But if they can get in there with the originals and a big enough catalog with a little note saying, oh, yeah, because if it's four ninety nine or five quid, you know, we've already got that. I'm already paying a subscription for that. So if they could do that, slap in the extras, or even if they can just go, right, okay, Disney Plus isn't launching until uh, January, February, but here's The Mandalorian or something like that. And they, they could do it that way to get around it. Um, but I would imagine in, for, for UK and Ireland, it would be easier for them to basically have a brand new app for Disney Life, get it in, swap it over, get all those existing customers because we've already got a system. And even if they just put in the Disney originals on top, it will be better than nothing. It should launch with everything, but you know, I just got sky deals and all the rest of it, but I'm fully expecting there to be a big difference between European and the U S what content's available because of laws. And it might take years until there's parity. I mean, you might not realize, but Netflix, there is a, we've got about two thirds less content on Netflix than you have because of licensing and all the rest of it. And so that's a big issue going forward. I actually experienced that when I was in London uh, earlier this year. It was like, just, I, it, it wasn't, um, uh, oh, what's on Netflix? I was actually, I knew that that was the case. And I, I, I want to see what this actually looks like on the English side. And yeah, it's shockingly barren uh, compared to the US content. And I think that might be a reason as well of like, um, for example, like for me with Netflix of like, other than the originals, the amount of non, all the movies and stuff are all quite old. There's nothing really, you know, so many other companies have got their stuff off there anyway. I don't know. It's like friends and all the rest of it. It's like, yeah, it's not in it's, there is that big issue of a lot of the stuff in America is not there. And I think that's the, one of the big issues of people of why everyone's, you know, they're all getting, ramped up about all these different streaming platforms and going, oh, you're taking it all away and it's everyone's being greedy it's like no it's netflix had it way too easy for way too long and way too cheap and it was not sustainable um and mm. i do think I, I think you know it was never gonna last of people paying seven eight bucks a month for the rest of their life and have access to everything that was never gonna last long no, but I, I think it could have just kept up with inflation. Um, you know, it, yeah, with the way money is going at the moment, there's no way it could stay at seven and eight, but it could have stayed with parity at the market. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's not what happens in capitalist society. Yeah. Uh, as soon as people saw how successful it was, they wanted to get in on it and they want to cut out the licensing or uh, the, the fees that are associated with it. They want to control their own. But also con- they have a big issue as well of like, if they hadn't have started looking at if there wasn't some alternatives, because at the minute it's like a bidding war between everyone. If Netflix was the only player in town, that doesn't work because then they start going, well, you want it on Netflix. You, we don't have to pay you much because there's no, there's no competition. There had to be competition. I think we're just going to see a reshifting of where it all is. And yeah, I mean, they're all going down different lines. I mean, listening to what, Comcast and NBC are saying it kind of like I was reading some articles on them and going, You do realize what's going on everywhere else? <laughs> and then going, No, we're staying with the same thing from what we've always done. And like, okay, you've got an idea, you've got a strategy, and you're going to see it through. I don't, it's, and also then you've got CBS doing their thing. 
I mean, what's going on over at AT&T? I don't know how many different platforms they want to launch with AT&T in their name. They keep, they set out a PR release about rebranding one of their, one of their streaming services. And they've got three companies literally like within like two words of each other. So no, even like cord cutters can't work out what's called. What. <laughs> like, that yeah. might've been the intent. <laughs> yes. It's a little bit more tricky. So I think everyone's going to be rejigging and sorting everything out, but, yeah, it's going to be interesting. I think like, we've got a few more weeks to the D23 Expo. So it'll be interesting to see if we get any think more in the next couple of weeks or if they're just going to hold everything back. Um, I wouldn't be at all surprised if we get the odd little sneak peek. of, But I'm not expecting a huge amount over the next couple of weeks. No, the the next couple, they'll, they'll want to trickle some stuff out, you know, and because the, the, they want to keep the hype going. But for the most part, the stuff we get is going to be like, here's a little bit of information about this. If you want to know more, come check yeah. us out on D23 or, or check the news sites for D23. Uh, it, we'll still get stuff, but it'll all be, it'll be teasers for teasers at this yes. point. Yes, lots of, lots of little teasers and teasers going on. But nevertheless, anyway, guys, thank you very much for joining us this week. We'll be back next week with another episode. Thank you for bearing with us. Hopefully the video and audio is all good because we really have just kind of gone out on a limb and tried some we've we yeah, we tried five different pieces of software before we got before we picked one. So we, we really hope that this one worked. Um so we'll be back soon. Um go check us out over at what's on Disney Like, follow and subscribe, and we shall see you guys soon. Laters. <laughs>